Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Lewin, CEO of the American College of Cardiology. Here with me today is Dr. Daniel Foreman, Chair of ACC's recently established Council on Cardiovascular Care for Older Adults. Dr. Foreman is joining me to discuss a newly released curriculum which specifically addresses cardiovascular care in the older adult. This educational project was sponsored by the John A. Hartford Foundation. The college has been honored to work with the Hartford Foundation and the release of this curriculum complements the other efforts in ACC's Year of the Patient. It is very exciting to see quality care of the older patient converge with the college's long-standing efforts in continuing education. Welcome, Dr. Foreman. Thank you. Dan, um, before we really get into the curriculum, can you tell me a little bit more about um, the care of the, of the older adult and the cardiovascular care? What, what defines this as a different kind of care system, and who are these patients? Where do we uh, begin to describe an age demarcation of the older adult? When we talk about patient aging, there are variations from individual to individual based upon their genetics and their lifestyle and their health care patterns. But when we speak about age-specific age -specific medical issues, we're generally speaking about ages 70 and over. Uh, but to elaborate, gotcha. aging is a very um, widespread issue. It affects all aspects of medical care. It affects the underlying pathophysiology. It also affects issues of presentation and the full spectrum of management issues. It affects medications. It affects uh, choices for, for um, uh, devices and uh, surgery for, for individual patients. And to you know, expand beyond that, our, even our choices or our thoughts about outcomes are different. Rather than focusing only on mortality uh, type of outcomes, we're worried about quality of life, about recurrent hospitalizations, about independence, and even end of life issues. I, I can see different teams actually being needed for this kind of a population. Exactly. Yeah, very much. Well, let's, let's talk about the curriculum. Without the Hartford Foundation, we probably wouldn't have been, had this, this breakthrough and had this whole new special curriculum develop. What, what makes this curriculum unique? And tell us a little bit about it. Well, I really want to start with emphasis, with gratitude to the Hartford Foundation for developing this program and, and really focusing on something which is value now and will have value into the future. When we speak about our population of older adults, uh, there are currently about 40 million patients age 65 and over, uh, or adults 65 and over in America. And those numbers are expected to grow to over 70 million by 2030. So when we, when we talk about the aging population, this is a population that is particularly predisposed to cardiovascular disease. So when we talk about um, the, the goals of, of cardiologists, they need to be better attuned to health care for this expanding population of vulnerable elderly. Yeah, well, good. You know, um, this is really great. Thank you for your leadership again in making this happen. I, I'm sure that uh, a lot of our fellows are going to want to get on the online version of this and take a look at it and so forth. Um, but also, we should encourage them to contact you and the Council on Cardiovascular Care for Older Adults um, as they uh, have questions or even suggestions for how we can improve this in the future. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you very much. Okay. And coming next, we have a detailed informational program on ACC's new educational opportunity, ECCOA. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Dr. Karen Alexander, cardiologist from Duke University and the Duke Clinical Research Institute. And I'm Dr. Susan Zeman, cardiologist and geriatrician from Johns Hopkins University. We are here to tell you a bit about a new educational offering in geriatric cardiology for cardiovascular fellows in training. ECOA, or the Essentials of Cardiovascular Care in Older Adults, was developed by a grant from the John Hartford Foundation to the American College of Cardiology Foundation. Together with over 40 cardiologists and geriatricians, we have assembled a curriculum which covers the key concepts in geriatric cardiology, which we would like to describe for you. But first, when we say geriatric cardiology, some think that it's really synonymous with cardiology in general, particularly today with the aging of the population. We're all caring for people in their 90s. So Dr. Zeman, as a cardiologist and geriatrician, what do you think about when someone says to you, geriatric cardiology? So certainly, the practice of geriatric cardiology or cardiology is often the same for older and younger adults. So there are similarities that are certainly correct. However, aging does change the playing field, and the care of the older, frail adult is not so straightforward. These older patients require more thought and consideration. One of the most important differences is a change in physiology, which occurs to all of us as we get older. And this sort of changes the playing field, and therefore we start to see syndromes that happen in older adults, included isolated systolic hypertension, heart failure with normal systolic function, 
uh, syncope and sick sinus syndrome. As we get older, we also change the way that we metabolize drugs. So the doses we might have used in younger folks can cause problems in older folks because of changes in renal and hepatic function and volume of distribution. Don't forget that many older people are on many other drugs as well. Then take into account that many of these older folks have geriatric syndromes, including frailty, some might be cognitively impaired, or have caregiver stress. So really, when we talk about care of the older patient, we're turning our focus to more of a patient-centered care mode. So there are content areas which are particularly important in older adults. But in addition, ACOA was created by a team of cardiologists and geriatricians. This enabled a sharing of perspectives typical to each of the fields. In general terms, consider these contrasts. Cardiology is focused on intensive care to cure disease, whereas geriatrics often is more protective, with the emphasis on doing no harm. Cardiology embraces drugs and devices as being good, whereas geriatrics often has a healthy skepticism that drugs may be dangerous. Cardiology is evidence-based, and geriatrics is much more emphasizing patient-centered care. Cardiology addresses prevention of acute events and consultative care, whereas geriatrics is much more multidisciplinary, focusing on transitions of care. In cardiology, end of life is often considered a failure of care, whereas in geriatrics, end of life is part of care. So in combining perspectives from both clinical disciplines, we can better appreciate a more comprehensive approach to older adults with cardiovascular disease. Exactly. So ECOA covers content as well as the approach to the older patient. This is particularly important in situations where evidence is less robust or where individual health preferences or health states may vary. We also included several, several cardiovascular fellows on our team. Yes, in particular, it was de devised for cardiology fellows. So the fellows helped to make sure that we kept it real. Also, we do not want to reiterate what they already know. And, but rather emphasize aspects of cardiology where age specifically is relevant. Really, ECOA is geriatric supplement to the core cardiology curriculum. The curriculum has four content modules and 10 disease-specific modules. This is what the main screen may look like. There's a way to track your progress through the program. ECOA is structured as follows. You complete a short pretest first, then you go through the four core modules in any order, and then you can go through the 10 content or disease specific modules in any order. A two or three question post-test is at the end of each module. And it fulfills ACGME mandates to core training in cardiovascular disease, which advises that cardiovascular trainees should gain general knowledge in geriatrics with a familiarity with the effects of aging on cardiovascular disease and therapy. ECOA is one of several ACCIS modules. ACCIS or ACC in-service, is an online program that houses several learning modules, including an ECG interpretation module and a diabetes module. ACCIS includes pre and post learning knowledge assessments, which can be tracked by both the test taker and the program director. The online availability enables it to be taken anytime, fit into any busy fellow schedule, and you can stop and return later if you need to. Here we have a sample question from the pharmacology module. Each module is case-based, so you enter with a question and that leads you to content. So you're invited at any time to log on and once you have access from your program director and can start your way through the modules. At the end of each module, there's a downloaded summary of key points as well as a certificate of completion, as you see here. And this helps us with benchmarking of scores you can see that you, both you and your training director have access to your scores and therefore are able to compare, you can compare yourself to how you've done nationally and how your program has done nationally. In summary, the goals of ACOA are to raise awareness of age-specific changes and how they impact cardiovascular disease assessment and management, to appreciate the evidence-based care of older adults, and to identify gaps in our knowledge, and finally, to reduce morbidity and mortality through the best and most judicious individualized care. We would like to thank you for joining us today for this introduction to ACOA. The program is online and available, and we hope to make it available to a broader audience in the coming year. We invite you to challenge yourself by taking the program and gaining knowledge from it. In addition, for those of you listening with a strong interest in geriatric cardiology, please consider joining the newly formed Council for Cardiovascular Care in Older Adults, or CCCOA, 
uh, which is led by the American College of Cardiology. This group includes those with a passion for optimizing care in older adults through education, advocacy, and research. I also want to thank all of the ECCOA contributors, as well as the cardiovascular fellows who have given us feedback and who are working through the modules right now. We look forward to your continued participation in efforts in geriatric cardiology, and perhaps we'll see you at the next CCCOA meeting. Thanks again. Thank